well thanks for watching and welcome back to the channel so in this video I'm going to talk about the basics of how we pour concrete and for this example we have a small slab here doing a little patio extension for our customer here so this patio ended up being six foot by 14 foot so um, pretty much one yard of concrete so a good video to slow it down and kind of show the details uh, this video is going to be as, as detailed as I can get so probably pretty boring for uh, for all you guys that have done this before but for DIYer hopefully this helps you out and gets you uh, a little bit more confident to do your own concrete so in this uh, you see we are removing the grass you never want to leave any organic material below the concrete or it could settle over time so you get that down to the dirt and get our forms in where we need it have about a quarter inch to an eighth of an inch of fall per foot um, not 100% necessary, but we like to do it if you have access to a hammer drill. We drilled in some pins to the old concrete for dowel rods. And then of course here we're putting in some 2A crusher run stone as the base. So next we'll go on to uh, putting the wire down just as wire reinforcement and we'll be ready to pour. Okay, so now that we have the forms in, the gravel in, and the job's basically set up, uh, we're pouring later today, so I'd just like to do a quick overview of the tools that we're going to use for the job. So, to start out uh, while we're placing, we have a uh, general concrete rake here. Um, you can use a regular garden rake as well, uh, but these with the flat surfaces tend to be a lot better. Uh, this one in particular actually has um, a little knob on the end here that you can use to pull up the wire as you're going. So this works a lot better than a garden rake, but uh, if you're DIYing it, uh, you don't want to buy this particular rake. Uh, a regular garden rake does work. Uh, next, we have just a straight mag float, magnesium float. So this will be for roughing up the concrete, kind of getting it that initial uh, initial flatness, bring some cream up to the top so we can use it to finish. Um, we have a steel trowel. So steel trowel will be one of the last finishes, this will actually close up the surface of the concrete, give it that smooth look, get it ready for roof finish. Have them at the square trowel on the end. Or you can get the rounded, leaves a little bit less lines, but it's harder to get into corners sometimes. Um, we have a false joint or a groover. So this just puts a stress concentration point in the concrete if you're going to wet cut your joints. Uh, you can also saw cut them the next day or, or even the same day with a certain type of saw but we like to wet cut the joints in it looks a lot nicer a little bit more decorative uh, and then you don't have to worry about shrinkage cracks overnight so uh, this comes in different sizes I think this is about a half inch deep groover which is the most common one we use for sidewalks patios uh, and then we have an edger so an edger all this is is going to be putting um, a radius on the edge kind of to give it a more decorative look you have a bigger one, maybe about four inches like this for a driveway or a bigger patio. Uh, and then we like to use the smaller ones, maybe about a two and a half inch or so for sidewalks and small patios, just to give it that uh, bordered outline look. Um, and all of these you can usually find at your local big box store. So the rake, the trowels, and the, uh, the groovers and the edgers. Um, also, initially for screening the concrete, we have an aluminum screed here. This is a four footer. Since our pad actually measures 14 by six, we'll probably use the six footer. That way we can get that entire length. Um, if you don't want to go get an aluminum screed, obviously these are a little bit more expensive for just a DIY wire. Uh, two by four or two by six works just fine. Just make sure there's not too much of a crown in it. And that's pretty much all the tools you'll need to get the job done. I mean, there's a lot more specialty tools you can get into, but for the most part, just to get by with a small pad or a small sidewalk, um, these will be your, your general tools that you'll be using. So, right. um, so now that we know about the tools, um, we have our dimensions for the job. Let's uh, go inside and get a piece of paper and we'll see just how we uh, figure out how much concrete we need and also how to order it. Okay, so now that we uh, know what tools we're using, we're gonna see just how we order concrete. So we know our pad is 14 feet by six feet on the bottom. So, of course, uh, if we're doing a patio or a sidewalk, we usually like to do four inches thick, maybe three to four inches thick. So to get our area for this shape, we do uh, area for this would equal length times our width, which we know 
from our measurement is 14 times 6. So we know our area is 14 feet times 6 feet, which equals 84 square feet. So that's our area. And for 4 inches thick, we divide the area by 81. So area divided by 81 gives us our yards. And that's just a conversion factor. We can go into that for the next step. But uh, so our area, 84 square feet divided by 81, that gets us uh, uh, yards would be 1.037 yards of concrete. So knowing that we need one yard, if it's perfect, uh, we always account for about 10% more. So that'd be about 1.14 yards. Uh, most places will just do half yards, but some will do quarters. But just to be safe, uh, we are ordering 1.5 yards for this job. So we're ordering 1.5 yards to do this 14 foot by six foot by four inches thick concrete patio extension. And for this, what will be exterior. So for exterior concrete, uh, we'll add air. That way for the Pennsylvania weather, it will uphold better in the freeze thaw cycle. It'll also be a 4,000 PSI mix. So that's just the amount of mortar, Portland cement, or sorry, Portland cement that they add to the mix. You can get 2,500, 3,000, 4,000, you know, the numbers go up. It gets a little bit more expensive per yard for the higher number. We almost pour everything is 4,000 PSI mix. And then, uh, We'll have this roughly at a five inch slump. Slump, which is basically just how wet the concrete is. The more water you add to the concrete, the weaker it gets. It also increases the cure time, so it might be there a little bit longer. So we'll shoot for a five. Sometimes it might be a little bit more because it's hard for the trucks to mix one and a half yards, but uh, we'll see if we can get it pretty close to a five inch slump. Okay, so next. Uh, we're going to go through, uh, if you're if it's interested, um, how to get this conversion factor, 81. So I have, this is the main method we use to calculate concrete pour jobs because almost all of our jobs are either 4 inches thick, uh, 5 inches thick, or 6 inches thick. That would be sidewalks, patios, uh, residential driveways, or commercial driveways, or heavier duty driveways. Um, tractor use, barns, um, hot tubs, six inches. So our conversion factors for each of these are gonna be uh, 81 for four inches thick. So if you know your uh, pad is four inches thick, you divide your area by 81, that'll get you the exact number of yards. For five inches thick, uh, you will be at 64. And for six inches thick, um, you'll be at 54. So those are your conversion factors. So if you divide your area, length times width, by 81, it'll be for four inches thick, 64, it'll be five inches thick, and 54, it will be for six inches thick. So for example, if we were pouring this patio six inches thick, our area, 84, divided by 54, would give us 1.55 yards at six inches thick. And that would be exact, so we would wanna get either two yards or one and three quarter yards, uh, just to make sure you always have enough because it's it's better to pay a couple extra dollars for half a yard than try to get uh, a, a yard or two left for bigger jobs whenever you run short. Uh, so the other methods for going through and measuring concrete, so, you have the method I just showed you, which is just dividing by the conversion factors. You could also just go to Google and search for something like concrete calculator. And I'm sure those are gonna be pretty accurate. Uh, they should get you at least close enough. Like I said, it's always good. We, we try to order about 10% more or so, depending on the size of the job. Uh, the last one, if you say, okay, well, I have something that's eight inches thick or 10 inches thick, and I don't know how to calculate my yardage for that. So we can go through the cubic uh, 
yard calculation here. That's where the conversion factors actually come from. So uh, if we're looking at our conversion factors, so we have our 14 foot by six foot pad and we have 84 square feet. That's feet squared uh, to the power of two for the area. But if you want to get yards, it's actually we're just all we're doing is converting this feet squared to the amount of yards based on that conversion factor. And when you order yards from the plant, it's technically yards cubed. And we need to relate feet feet cubed to yards cubed. So if we have one yard is equal to three feet, and that's just the general um, association between those two and we have to cube each side so we get a volume measurement because this pad isn't just an area it's actually a volume that is 14 feet long six feet six feet wide and we have a depth here that is four inches and we need to relate these units, so feet, feet, and inches. Four it needs to convert to feet. So that would be one third of a foot or 0 0.33 feet. So that gets us all the same units here. So our volume, our total volume of concrete that we need, volume is going to be 14 feet times six feet times 0 0.33 feet. Hopefully you can see that. Which, in this case, if I uh, multiply these out real quick, the 14 times 6 times 0.33, that gives us a total volume of 27.72 feet cubed. So that's how many feet cubed of concrete we need. But when you order it from the concrete plant, the ready-mix plant, they want to know yards. And so we know three feet cubed equals one cubic yard. But, I mean, they just say yards. I don't, it gets dropped off the yards. So three cubic feet cubed, one cubic yard. So that's one yard cubed equals three feet times three feet times three feet. And this three times three, we know is nine. Nine times three is 27. So one cubic yard equals 27 cubic feet. And so when we come back to this, we know our volume, we need is 27.72 cubic feet of concrete. And we know 27 cubic feet is one yard. So if we divide our 27.72 by 27, we know how many yards of concrete to get. In this case, it's we need 1.027 yards. And so that pretty much matches our 81 conversion, 1.03. So a little bit off, but uh, that those conversions will get you close enough that it uh, shouldn't make much of a difference. So this this volume calculation will work with anything. So let's just do one more quick example of that if we were pouring at six inches thick. And then we'll go through where those conversion factors come from if you're interested. So let's say we have the same area, 14 feet by six feet, but we wanted to make it six inches thick. So six inches, we need like units, so feet, feet, and inches. Six inches is actually equal to six divided by 12 feet. Six inches divided by 12 feet um, would give you 0 0.5 feet, half a foot. I mean, that's the quickest way to think about it, it's half a foot. So we have 14 times six times 0 0.5 is your volume. 14 feet, 6 feet, 0 0.5 feet is your volume.
and that equals feet cubed. So if we do that, we have half of 14 is 7 times 6 is 42. So we have volume equals 42 feet cubed. So we need 42 cubic feet of concrete to do this job. But when we order it from the plant, we need to order yards of concrete. And we already know from before that one cubic yard of concrete equals 27 cubic feet of, sorry, let me take these off. One cubic foot, 27 cubic feet. So with 27 cubic feet, we'll take our volume, 42, divided by cubic feet, divided by 27 feet cubed in one yard, and that will give us our total yardage that we need to order, which is 42 divided by 27, 1.56 yards. So when you would call the plant, you'd say, you would need roughly two yards. And of course, that matches our six inch calculation up here with this 54, 1.55. And so the conversion factors, the 81, the 64, and the 56, um, those are all coming from the same one cubic yard equals 27 cubic feet. So if we want to say this is our volume calculation, so we have volume equals feet cubed, area equals feet squared, sorry, feet cubed here. So if we divide this 27 by our thickness, then we don't have to deal with this calculation. We can just use the conversion factor. So. Uh, if we go four inches thick, five inches thick, or six inches thick for the concrete, four inches equals one third of a foot, or 0 0.33 feet. Five inches is a little bit less, so it's five divided by 12, or 0 0.417 feet, we'll say. Six inches is half a foot, so it's 0 0.5 feet. And you can just get this by just saying four divided by 12 is 0.33, five divided by 12 is 0.417, six divided by 12 is 0.5, because there's 12 inches in a foot. So if we want to factor out this thickness from our 27, we would say 27 for four inches thick, 27 divided by 0.33 is 81.8. So for four inches thick, we have 27 feet cubed divided by 0 0.33 feet, and that will give us an 81.8 feet squared area. So that's your conversion factors. Technically, it's 80, 81.8, but to use 81 or 82, it's not going to make much difference in your concrete. So that's where our factor comes in, 81. If you say we know the area and we want to do the area divided by 81 gives us our amount of yards because all you're doing is taking this volume factor and making it uh, an area factor. So for five inches, it's the same thing. So we have our 27 feet cubed divided by, for five inches thick, you'd be 0.417 feet. And that would be 27 divided by 0 0.417, 64.7. So 64.7. Uh, you know, we use 64. Uh, like I said, it doesn't make much of a difference to use 64 or 65. Uh, won't make that much of a difference for, for anything less than, you know, a couple trucks worth of concrete. And then we have six inches thick. So for six inches thick, we have 27 feet cubed divided by 
0 0.5 feet and that gets us uh, 54 should be here I'm just double check 54 of course 54 feet squared and so these were these this is where these conversion factors come in so 82 65 ish 54 and those match these conversion factors for if you get your area and then divide by these factors and then I mean, you can you can come up with more factors if you want to all you have to do is divide 27 by whatever fraction of an inch you want for your thickness so if you wanted to do eight inches uh, it would be the same thing you would just divide um, eight inches by whatever fraction or 27 by whatever fraction of a foot eight inches is would be two-thirds so that would be 0.66 so you divide 27 divided by 0.66 you get 41 or 40.9 so for eight inches thick you'd be 27 feet cubed divided by 0.667 feet and that gets you um, 40.9 so if you were pouring eight inches thick and you wanted to do the conversion factor, you'd use 40.9 or 41. Um, really, these are these are a lot quicker. This is this is the main way we do it because almost all of our pads are four or five or six inches thick, and it's just quicker to calculate the area and do a quick conversion factor for for those rather than doing the volume calculation. So, uh, three good methods. Uh, obviously, for the DIYer, your best option is just to just Google it. You know, uh, Google. A concrete calculator type in your dimensions in feet or inches or whatever they ask you to and it should spit out a pretty close um, volume for yards just make sure the website is not accounting for any additional concrete or 10 percent increase as well because you know ordering too much isn't the best either so i hope this helps and uh, we will go to the job site later we'll get this board and hopefully show some more detail about the tools we use and how we are going to do a small job like this thanks
You want to get this spread out? I'm going to get this in the street. All right. I got it. You okay? Yeah. You want to spread that out? Side. No, I got it. Just uh, get him oh. emptied out. All right. Hey, Gary, you maybe back up a little bit. Yeah. Okay, let me clean this up first.
Okay, so we just finished screeding here. Uh, first half of this ended up coming out closer to uh, probably a three inch slump rather than a five. So it's a little stiff, but that's okay. So basically whenever I'm screeding with that six foot screed, all I'm doing is looking at my concrete pad up there and my form here, staying on both points and just making a nice coplanar surface here. So uh, no one's ever gonna be perfect. You can see there's a couple little bumps and uh, humps here. Now if you had to, you could smooth this out with a float and a trowel and it wouldn't be too big of a problem for something this size. But if you have uh, an access to it, the full float is a lot better for getting all these little imperfections out. So you always want a bull float perpendicular to the way you screed because it'll start to take out all those little high and low spots in the concrete. And like I said, this is a little stiff here, so it'll be take a little bit to work up some cream but with this bull float all it is is a chain system where you turn it to the right to go forward turn it to the left to come backwards but you always have the front edge up or the back edge up depending on which way you're going and that'll be true with pretty much every process we do with the floats the steel trowels uh, you can kind of think of it like skiing or snowboarding where your downhill edge always has to be up 
or uh, you're gonna catch an edge and fall. So you need to have that forward edge up if you're going forward, back edge up if you're going back. And that way you don't dig into the concrete, make a hole or anything. So as you see, the more we run the bull float over it, the more it pushes the aggregate down, brings up that cement, and gives us a nice surface to work with whenever we actually start finishing. So this is a really critical step for making your life easier towards the end. And then of course, before the truck driver leaves or cleans out, uh, we always like to get about half a wheelbarrow of concrete just to uh, fill in our edges or any low spots. It's always nice to have that little bit of extra cement and cream on the top just to get by with any, any holes or anything because sometimes the bull float will lower the edges a little bit. So get this bull floated and then we'll start our first hit on the edges to get the rocks out of the way and uh, we'll be on our way. Okay, so I bull floated this pad both ways now. This first way we were going and then actually left to right as well. You can see there's still a few little craters in here, especially where it's stiffer concrete. So whether it's on the edge or out in the middle of the slab, you just want to get a little bit of concrete and you don't want to slap it on there hard enough to make a bigger crater. But if you just smack it in there a little bit, try and fill that crater in, then the bull float will be able to go right over that, bring up the cream, and you'll be on your way. So we'll get this little bit of concrete in here. Go over this one more time here and you'll see it'll just take that little bit I put in there, fill those holes right in. Now I'm not putting any weight on the, the bull float other than its own weight, so I'm just pushing it slowly, letting it glide along, and do the work itself basically. keep going over a couple spots. Now if it's close to the edge, you can just reach it by hand with the float. It's a lot faster, but just demonstrating if this was a 20 by 20 pad and you had a little spot out there, you, know, you have to have some good accuracy with your throwing your concrete, but since this is close to the end here, we'll get this by hand. So just take our float and uh, Customer had us do a little bit extra on this older sidewalk here while we were here, so we'll get this loaded in nice form. Try and make this look good. Just a patch over here. But get this floated in nice. And you want to just keep your float nice and even on the edge so you're not digging in. And we'll refill these edges to get them nice and even. You see, the more you work it with the float, kind of rips that surface open and brings up that mortar or that cement in the concrete. So, get these little holes filled. Get a nice decent surface to work with for our next step. And again, just like the bull float, as I come along, I have my the back of my float resting on the edge here. It's too wet right now. I don't want to be too far out here because I have no reference point. And since it's so wet still, uh, you can start making holes. So unless I have to, I'm, I'm gonna try to stay on here. If you're going left, the left comes up. If you're going right, the right comes up. And uh, just something you get used to as you do it. You can do it right-handed, left-handed. You know, eventually you're gonna need to be able to do it with both hands. Get it a little bit more for this edge. tools out of the dirt and that's it try and clean this up over here while we can we'll put some of this wetter stuff in here to let it mold into that better this is some of that first stuff we had that came out a little stiffer kind of hard to pour when it's a thin piece like this 
So we push all these rocks down away from our edge so when we come back and edging this later, we won't hit so many and work some cream up in here. And the more I go over it. Okay, so now we're gonna start hitting our edges for the first time. So you can see from the bull float, it's hard to tell from the camera, but we have a little bit of a dip here on the edge where the bull float moves. So we're gonna end up taking the shovel here where I find it and uh, just starting to fill in those edges. Filling in some potholes down here with the extra, you know, try to use what you can. So to bring these edges up, flush, if we look at the float here, uh, see this gap under here, try to get that flush, so move a little bit of concrete in there, and we'll work this in, try to keep everything nice and even, doesn't take much, but uh, you can even steal some from the field out here if you need to, but it's just easier to, to fill in on most of the stuff. Since I was old enough to wash tools, probably 10. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, my dad and uncles taught me and my cousins, but then my cousins, like they just didn't, uh, they didn't keep up with it, I guess, as much as me and my dad did. We'll take our edger. We're not putting a finished edge on it right now. All we're basically doing is moving all those little rocks out of the way. That way, when we come back for a final edge, we won't be running into all those big stones. So we'll just cut our edge in, take our float, put some nice cream in there. Keep your form clean is important too, because you're using that as a reference point for everything. And then when we come back to do our final edge on it, it'll be a beautiful crisp edge, nice and flat, and we'll be good easy when it's getting harder so everything's easier easier right now while it's still pretty wet and hasn't started curing that much yet so concrete's been placed for roughly 10 minutes now and we've already bull floated and started the edges so just to fill in something like that just take your float keep it flat rather than bringing it up so you can see that cream working into it and then you just even edge take our edger and just let it run right along that get all these rocks out of the way the more work you can do up front now the easier it'll be later so I'm gonna run down these edges get all these brought up to grade and the first edge cut into it and I'll catch back up to you on the next step Okay, so we just got all the edges done, so it's concrete's been placed now for 45 minutes, so all the edges have been brought up to height. Uh, I tried to clean up this little additional piece here he wanted us to do. I'll just put a little false joint in here to try to re-separate these two pieces. Um, and then eventually we'll get a small false joint off that corner, a small false joint right here in the center where it starts to taper down, and that should be it. But uh, until it starts to set up a little bit, uh, we're just going to be watching it, uh, but we should be ready to go as soon as it starts to set up, get our wet joints cut in, and uh, start the steel trial. So we'll see you then. Okay, so the concrete's been down for about an hour now, and we are just going to get started putting some false joints in because we have, uh, we're just getting ready to have this get cured, and we'll hit it one time with the steel trowel. so we'll see how it feels under the trowel here. <laughs> I am kind of so we'll put one false joint here where the brake is we'll have one over here where the, uh, the little wing is because those tend to crack a little bit So we'll just line up this false joint. 
trying to hold our straight edge while we get this cut in. All we're doing here is making a weak point in the concrete so we force it to crack at this point. It's just a decorative crack really. So again, just lift up that edge and we'll grab our float and uh, fill that in with some cream. That way, just like the edges, it'll be nice and ready to go whenever we're doing the last pass on it. So, get this filled in. You can see, even an hour after, not quite set up yet, but it is getting hard to the touch. So, get these joints cut in. And we'll hit it with the floats one more time just to bring that cream up. And we'll pretty much be ready to get a steel trowel hit after that. We'll be brooming it, bore to the edges, and we'll be done. Okay. You can see that scraping sound it means it's really getting set up. So we start to bring some cream up. And smooth this all out, make it look nice. Once the water flashes off the top like this, for my area with the freeze and thaw cycle, you don't want to trap any bleed water in the surface with that steel trowel. So wait for the water to flash off like that. Hit it with the trowel. Try and get it as smooth as we can for the bream finish. line where our screed was here and we will be ready for brooming almost an hour and 15 after placement and of course that change is based on slump of the concrete and it's about 75 degrees out right now low humidity so in the summer it might be a little faster and as it gets later in the year it'll be a little bit slower so just have to see 
how the concrete's reacting to everything. And when you hit it with a trowel, same rules as everything else. End up, move it along, clean your form. You're good to go. And this is ready for brooming. You see it's a lot smoother now when you close up the surface with this steel trowel versus the uh, versus the float that opens the surface. So this just gets us ready for brooming. My dad got the other false joint cut in on that corner. You want to try to do all your inside corners because those are just easy places for it to crack. And then since we have a transition here, went with a false joint there and then one small one here to separate this uh, little repair job here over the existing pad. So uh, we need to give us about another 15 minutes and we should be ready to broom and then recut the edges. Okay, so we're pretty much ready to broom here. So this part was in the shades, a little bit behind what was in the sun up there. But if you look, you can just barely press your fingers in, probably about an eighth of an inch. And you see there's a little bit of a cream on the top still. We got our false joints cut in. Uh, that way, whenever we uh, start to broom, we can just get a nice clean edge. And of course, we use the big edgers to cut in the rocks to get them out of the way. But we use the smaller edger for more of a decorative look whenever we uh, start to do the final touch on the edge so look at the broom on here and we'll see how this first pass looks and when we're brooming we're always going perpendicular to the most common way you're walking so uh, in this case we'll go this way but in other uh, instances you might be brooming the opposite direction but perpendicular to the walking path and that's looking pretty nice of course, this is a nylon broom, but you can also be doing this with a standard horsehair broom. You don't need anything fancy. You just let the broom weight do all the work. Clean off the end. You're good to go. It. A little bit of touch up on the wing here. Just a little wet on there. back in after the broom's done. False joint goes in, gives it that nice bordered look. Just 
this one more time. The small edger here. You need to don't want to want to be careful not to uh, roll your edger into the edge like this and make a dip and keep it flat. And just ride along the top side of your form there. And since we came back earlier and got all these rocks out of the way, it makes it really easy to get a nice smooth edge the first time through. Make these edges nice and crisp. If you have a little hole like this, steal that little bit from the edge, work it in, especially on the corner here. Just take a little bit of this excess cream from the form. nice crisp corner there. And just like the floats, the trowels, you're pushing forward, you're up, pulling back, you're back, just like that. And you're trying to get a nice little inlay here. You can push down on this line a lot harder, but uh, it's better if you just have a slight reveal on it. You don't want to push too hard on the right. Just fill these holes in. Get a little bit of cream from this pad we hadn't brung yet. That's my dad connecting these two lines here. Since they don't quite line up, just uses a steel trowel to blend those two in. You can also use a uh, small margin trowel from the block work. But whatever you need to make sure there's no lines leading to nowhere. Always looks better to have them flow together. Just get a little bit from up here. Yeah, you're just trying to close up all these little holes here. And we're coming up to our false joint. Just trying to blend these two edges together. Initially you want to just go right through your false joint and then you can come back. And since you already established the groove, you no longer need the screed. It'll just follow the groove you made now that it's a lot more set up. And that's it. So keep an eye out for the ants. Get out of here, bud. Same thing with the groover, you just want a little bit of pressure on the outside to establish that line. A little bit of pressure on this side to establish that smooth line. And we have a good straight groove because we use our screed. And we just clean up the transition here and we should be good to go.
course edging up against old concrete like this is always harder than forms because it's never quite as even. Let's see if we can get an edge on here. I couldn't find them. These should be loose enough to just pop out. So my dad's just working on taking the pins out because we'll just pull the forms today and be done. Hey, can I have that steel trowel? Right at the last minute. Which one do you need? The, 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 small, the small one. It doesn't matter. That's good. The devil's in the details, though, right? I did a job for a guy. He was when I, when I retired. I worked. Out. Oh, I think these corners finally dried enough that we can get some broom on it. That was a British thing or an Ireland thing. I, I probably was more British. I don't know. But that was that was all that stuff going on out there. They did that back then too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, my brothers worked at the farm, at the home. They used to sleep in the mansion. I can't find a good angle on this. Huh? You learning anything? No, I I know what you're gonna do. You're gonna to walk to YouTube. I am. <laughs> hey, what would you say the name of your YouTube was? Red Maple Ranch. Can you write it down though? Red Maple Ranch. No, this is fine. I got it. But it's, uh, if you go on Facebook, uh, Smokey Hollow. Also. The, the concrete business is something yeah, different. I, I got on there and looked. Yeah. That's no. the concrete business. The concrete business. Yeah. Concrete business. Uh, yeah. I'll get that. You want to put some stuff away? Mm hmm. Are you emptied the water? Yeah. Next week I'll go looking for my ah. water. Yeah. Did you hear me? Yeah, you can go up and see the point. Yeah, okay. Sometimes you don't hear me. I hear you. Are you? I just don't think you don't pay attention. You're bad. We never hear each other right. He says one thing and I say, that's what I'm saying, right? Yeah. 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 Ye
They could if you want to. Um, I put my son's handprints in mine, and my dog's paw prints, and it's fun. Yeah, it's something he'll look at. Yeah, I like seeing the date in it with his fingerprints in there. You know, it's something I'll have the rest of my life. I mean, might as well. We did a. I had a flat thing. I did my first. Oh no. Some general construction adhesive would work. Yeah. What is it? Just construct. Did you install that broom? I, I took it back. You wouldn't need it? Uh, let me see if I can just get it with this, this broom here. Yeah, I'm good. They have <laughs> regular construction adhesive would work. You can get it at, like a, it looks like a tube of caulking from the big uh, oh, big box store. Blue, they call it? It's yeah, it's in the paint aisle at that, like Lowe's or Home Depot. Oh, okay. It's just called like general construction adhesive. Oh, okay. Now, do you have uh, any wood clamp? Okay, well that's it. So uh, we are two hours and 15 minutes after we initially placed it from the truck. So we have our uh, broom finish, uh, a couple false joints in here for uh, controlled cracking, pulled our forms off and uh, looks good. Came out nice, a nice edge on the borders and uh, you know, this will be a, a good little additional space for them. So uh, we're all done for today. We just have to get some topsoil and maybe some grass seed in here and get this yard looking back to normal but for the concrete uh we're all set and uh yeah hopefully this project helps one of you guys out hopefully you can see some of the process and how we deal with these jobs um even for the bigger they really uh they pretty much get the same process just a little bit faster a little bit bigger so all right well thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one